you partner with Axon, you immediately gain access to a full range of products and solutions designed to meet the complex needs of today's grower. We carry all major brands and sizes of tires and wheels. We specialize in large diameter wheels for large equipment. We have one of the largest OEM replacement wheel inventories in North America. Known for extreme flotation setups, duals, and triples, we have wheels for all makes and models of tractors, sprayers, combines, and grain carts. If we don't have the wheel in stock, we'll custom build, sandblast, and paint in-house. There isn't a more vast inventory in North America dedicated to helping dealers move more iron. With facilities on the West Coast and in the heart of the Midwest, leverage our 230,000 square feet of indoor inventory to solve any problem a grower may have. Move more iron with Axon. Moving iron. Hello and welcome to Moving Iron Podcast number 323. This edition of Moving Iron Podcast is brought to you by Axon Tire, helping dealers move more iron for the past 100 years. For more information, go to axontire.com. Axon has two amazing offers. Aaron. Two? Two of them to give to the loyal listeners of the Moving Iron Podcast. One is, if you got a, uh, if you're like anywhere else this winter and it's cold, uh, it seems like it's like cold everywhere, you need something to keep the, the, uh, the heat from releasing out of your head and your ears from freezing off. Absolutely. Send an email to marketing at axontire.com. Oh, do they, they make those for lambs? I don't know. I don't know if they mm. do or not. But they, you can get a free beanie if you do that. Awesome. Right? So you can go hardcore, pull it down just over the eyes and look like you're... Ooh, like old uh, Fat Albert Mushmouth. Mushmouth. There you go. Maybe you could be like in the Cypress Hill video. Uh, you know what I mean? Taking hits from the bong. You know what I mean? You could be doing that. But nonetheless, Insane if you want in the membrane. If you want one of those, send an email to marketing at axontire.com with all your details and they will send you that free beanie in the mail. Uh, you can also send me an email at moving iron podcast at moving iron podcast dot com and uh, Axon will give you fifty dollars off of your registration for the Moving Iron Summit coming up here in Nashville, Tennessee, September eleventh through the thirteenth. I'd have two people sign up. Nice. Yeah. Well, you you should have about two thousand because there's no better event in event slash program in used ag equipment whatsoever. I, I would agree with you. I think it's a solid program, and not just because I put it together, but I think it's a solid program. Well, I was gonna say that's an unbiased opinion. So you pitched in. There we go. There we go. I think that's a solid one. But anyway, if you're one of the first 150 people to sign up for that, you get a $50 discount and registration fee. So check that out if you want to be a part of that. Send me an email at Moving Iron Podcast at Moving Iron Podcast dot com, or you can just go to the Moving Iron Podcast website, which is Moving Iron LLC dot com. Go over to the registration tab and fill out the information there, and we'll get that over to you. Sign a great speaker. Nice. Up. It's going to be a good good thing. I guess more information on about that. It's Aaron Fennel, everybody. <laughs> now it's a good one. And so we've got. We've got a, a good guy signed up there. I think it's going to be a very interesting deal. Working on some breakout sessions and what that might look like and, and doing some more like small group stuff where there's a lot more uh, um, interaction based around certain topics as we do through the day. So I think that's going to be a big, a pretty cool it, thing too. It, is it John Elway? No. Can it be? No. Are you sure? It's uh, Elvis Gerbox. We're going to go. We're going to go. We're going to go way back there. Plan B. Yeah, plan, plan D. <laughs> Um, okay. Got her. Got her, man. That's Got her. Cool. Interested in doing that? Send me an email, moving iron podcast, moving iron podcast.com. Go to the website, sign up, or go send that email to marketingaxontire.com and get that free beanie. This podcast is also brought to you by Valley Transportation. Valley Transportation has been hauling ag and construction equipment across the country for the past 33 years. Call Parker at 800 657 4910 for all your trucking needs. At Valley Transport, our tra our goal is to help you reach yours. And no matter how you buy ag equipment from a dealer, auction, or private party, AgDirect can finance it. You can even apply online at agdirect.com. Learn more about your financing options at agdirect.com. 
TractorZoom has access to over $20 billion in heavy equipment data, sales data. TractorZoom's Iron Comps is the industry's trusted solution for transparent equipment values and optimal pricing insights. <laughs> this podcast is also brought to you by Anvil AppWorks. Their dealer connect CRMI app with integrated inventory management is an affordable sales-based solution for your dealership. Create connected customer experience and transform how you work today. All right. So I got my buddy Aaron here with me. It's been a while since we had a chance to do a podcast. We had a lot of stuff going on. This well, time. we had some chances, but... Yeah, the things came up. Yeah, it's the holidays. It's the holidays. Yeah. So we thought we'd sit down and kind of do a recap of, of what we saw happen in 22 and kind of what we see gonna what we see happening in 23. So a couple big things kind of come out. So today is the 12th of January of 2023. Um, we are going to have a, a conversation about it's going to start evolving quickly, I think, around what we see happen in, in, in the grain market. The well, or, uh, Indian final Indian stock report came out came out today, and it was corn and soybeans were way way under um, what the what the expectation thought it was going to be for the market. What the expectation was going to be um, started looking at wheat the same way. Started looking at some different things that are out there. So the carryout situation that we're looking at is pretty well. Same song, different verse. When we start looking at what's there, which I think is going to start opening up a different conversation than we saw in twenty two around equipment, because that is still have high commodity prices and and markets are good right now. We're really seeing some good things move. The difference between this time last year, when we saw some movements in the market, was you know interest rates were two point nine percent. Yeah. So now we're looking at some stuff, you know, which we turn on where you're at anywhere. The good old days. Yeah. Six and a half to eight percent, depending on what it is that you're looking at. Six and a half to right? <laughs> yeah. And there's some there's some stuff out there that you see that has they I've seen some advertised six and a half oh, yeah. stuff, but but looking at that, the situation that we see starting to evolve there, we're coming out of a I would say 21, 22 being a, a, a quote unquote scarcity market. Obviously, I mean, if you had it available, it, it was going to bring top dollar. Um, the, the first thing in everybody's advertisement available now, yeah, you can have it today. <laughs> <laughs> and so you, you see that transaction transition start to take place and all those things take hold there. I think moving into 23, we're starting to see it's nothing like, I mean, by no means is this scarcity thing out we're out of the scarcity woods yet at all i mean there's still no. plenty of things out there the delays aren't anything like they used to be um they're still there though. they're still there though we're starting in some instances we're seeing stuff get moved up even in some some yeah some uh build dates stuff like that are starting to get moved up a little bit um so those kind of things are starting to take hold uh, my opinion of 23 is that i don't think we're going to see a a quote-unquote correction you know, to, to me, when you say correction, that's just a nice way of saying downturn, massive collapse of oh, the market, yeah. right? Right. That's just a, a nice way of saying that. Or you decided to move the gravel road a quarter mile. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. So I, I think when you look at those things and, and you see what's out there, to me, I I see some of the scarcity premium getting kind of worn off in 23 into 24. I don't think we're going to sell any less machines. I think that's going to be a similar, a similar situation. Um, because we're going to go into a situation where you're going to have, you know, you're going to have, you're going to have money. You're going to have money to spend, you know what I mean? And it's going to be the tax situation that we see, that same story, that same song that we see in that basically September through the end of the year time frame. We're going to continue to see that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, that's one thing as, as we reflect on 22, year end was not really much to speak about no and that's because year end was february 1st right yeah. all the way to december 31st so yeah it it just happened all year I, in fact i had guys be like i hate to do this to you but can we push that to next year like really yeah. it's like oh yeah i bought a lot of shit well and Every single input was just bam, 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 like quadruple by the time it was all said and done. By by the time you need it, right? So, yeah the the year end wasn't much, but we had a we had an entire year of year end. Right. So that was that was super cool. And the reason for that was 
the stuff that was supposed to show up in February showed up in August. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> trickling in throughout the year, and you know, when things showed up, you know, you, you did the paperwork on it. I actually, I sold a, a gentleman a combine last November. We did the contract today with Ag Direct. <laughs> but yeah, <clears throat> no, uh, not last November. I'm sorry, November of 21. November 21, you just did the paperwork today. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> that it was a it was a combine that was like I got to the point where I'm like, I swear to God it's coming. And when we know something, I'll let you know. And God bless him. He's like, I get it. That'll work. That shows you how, you know. Well, and and then it was one of those combines that came in October 30th. Yeah. So, well, we're not switching. Yeah, we're just gonna finish. Well, then they got delayed, and so here we are. But yeah, that was wild. I was like, "Wow, yeah, that's a that's a record." That is, that is crazy. But that just shows you what the market that we are in. Oh yeah, yeah. How that how it started out in twenty two with the you told me it was going to be in thirty days ago. And now it's like, I uh, just call me when it's here. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's how it kind of ended up, ended up being. And that's, 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 a, that's kind of the key factor. I think in, in, when we look at what you see happening now is that, you know, I'm going to put a record out here um, with me and Aaron are going to go back through and, and talk about some, some highlights from a tractor zoom report that we got and what that looks like and what they see happening out there from the auction perspective and from, from the retail perspective and those kind of things. But I think, I think the key takeaway here as you we look into twenty three is that there will be machines on lots that you can that you can go buy. Um I mean I'm not gonna sit there and say like they're gonna be there for six months for you to kind of stew and stir and this, that and the other thing, but I'm gonna say that there's there's gonna be the opportunity to buy something that, that fifteen people aren't already in line for it. Right. You know, it might only be three or four people in line for it, but everyone's making their decisions, you know, a little bit slower now. And not as abrupt as they were, because I mean, I think there's some options out there that we're going to start seeing pop up, especially in the combine market. I mean, it's it's the one thing I think. I swear to God, combines are they're they're the second most important thing on on the farm next to a planter, and but they are the first thing to to the first thing to pile up, and the last thing to leave. Man, really? Yeah, really. They're kind of like that that relative that you have that comes by your house and they're the first person to get there. And then and they're the last person that you want to talk to. And they're the last person to leave. And don't you go falling in love with her, Clark. We're taking it with us. And we leave next month. That's what you call, that's what you call active yield. <laughs> so, I mean, I think when you're looking at those kind of things, the common market, you're starting to see, I, I am not panicked at all about combines right now. I don't, it's not, Oh my God, the world's coming to an end. But there are combines now that they're, they're the used marketplace is starting to fill up. Now, the one thing I will say about combines that I'm the most concerned about more than anything else is that the front end of, of the washout cycle, that that very low hour up to like 250 hour machine, there's a billion of them out there. And boy, are they expensive. They are expensive. And you're looking at what you see happening there. And so as, my, as I look at that, what, what concerns me most about that is going from there and trying to trickle your way through all the way down through the, the you know, the washout cycle and get into that, that cash, no trade scenario. And when I'm looking at the used marketplace right now, it's going to take a lot of work to fill in those gaps that are down the line because until you get, there's still a bunch of 12s and 13s and 14s and stuff like that laying around out there. Um, not so much on dealer lots, but there's a lot of guys that, that, kind of made the move on some of those things maybe a year or two ago but now they're sitting at a 2000 hour machine 1500 hour machine 1800 hour machine something like that 2500 hour machine i've seen a lot of valuations come through with 2500 hour machines oh yeah i mean so probably more than not especially when you get in those older you know the glut rigs right for so now, sure so when you're looking at those machines those are the those are the guys that are looking to trade into that Seven hundred fifty thousand hour machine type of deal, and here, there's not just not many of those out there. Here's what I see: the problem is, I I don't think I think the washout cycle problem starts at the very damn top. Oh sure, 
the half a million dollar used combine. Mm -hmm. Where is that buyer? How do we get him to spend half a million and not seven for a new one? I mean, man, we're it. This sh it just blows my mind every day. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, we, we've had that, but that's the same philosophic conversation that we've had about, you know, for the longest time. You swear to God, you'd never sell three hundred thousand dollar combine. Yeah, still wish I, still wish that was true. I mean, we used to have. Aaron and I used to have pretty heated arguments about I could I can never sell anything over three hundred thousand. I'm like, what are you talking about? That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard anyone say. And and you know, here we are. But now I mean, now we're talking about a half a million dollar machine. And I think that's where in my opinion, as you look at what we see happening, the size of equipment, the price of equipment, and the the buying public and what that looks like. I think we've hit some pretty solid, very um, solidified buying segments that, that are going to start being more defined in 23 than we ever saw in 22 or before that. So question, the loyal listeners know that I'm old school and you're, we don't even need people. We have robots. I just I look at the current market. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not so much, but is, is all of this and, and this will be future couple podcasts this year but is is everything's a half a million dollars what flips on the switch to 20 little ones well, it, 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 is it going to be that or is it just point blank labor I, I think in my opinion the half a million dollar used equipment stuff that we see out there is going to um, it's not going to slow down and I, I, I don't think that's going to slow down to the point where we have a, a used equipment problem. You got to understand that some of the stuff that we that's out there right now was priced at, at at the high, and just like every other bubble that's come through here, whether it was the 13, 12, 13, uh, 11, 12, 13 bubble that we saw where things were really priced up here high, and then they you know we came in and fell. In. The difference between now and then is that. We don't have oversupply. We don't have the oversupply that we've constantly, only always fought in this business. I, I can't still, still to this day. You know, I an eleven eight R. Yeah, I mean, I got a friend of a twelve thirteen combine. Yeah, everybody's just like, God, it could be the best damn combine anybody's ever owned, but it's a, but it's a twelve. Yeah, and everybody's like, yeah. I mean, if you take a look at, just go back and I mean. A buddy of mine back home. I used to sell stuff with, and he works. He works at the John Deere dealership. I worked back, you know, when I worked back home, and it was, you know, he, I think he's seventy years old now or something like that. And he, you know, he 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 goes, it doesn't matter. He goes every time we've ever had a boom, we were telling a bunch of new into a bunch of used. You know, I can reference back to the ninety six hundred debacles. Yeah, you know, oh, go buddy. Back, you can go back into you. You start going down the line of all the stuff that happened. You start looking at. When um, you know, big four wheel drives there for a minute were yeah were, were a problem in in the late eighties, early nineties. You know, um, even going into the late nineties, early two thousands, there was some there was some tractor issues that we saw there. You know, I mean, and in that eleven, you know, eleven twelve arena, mm -hmm. four wheel drives were soft. Yeah, they were. They were. They really were. It's it's like the decade flip. Yeah, the late of a decade and the early of a decade mm -hmm. is tough for four wheel drives. Other than this last one, and the, the weird thing about the four wheel drive deal is the correlation between these two. When four wheel drives are dead, sprayers are awesome. When sprayers are dead, four wheel drives are awesome. Yeah, that's. And I don't know if that's a. Oh well, we got to go rip up the snow till. Yeah, you know, I don't know if that's what drives that or what that is, but it's like a five year cycle. Sprayers are going to run. and Roundup's not working. Hook up the V-plow. <laughs> and you'll start seeing this, like, peak in full drives, and they'll start coming down, and right behind them come sprayers. And sprayers I, come down, full drives start to come I down. wonder if rod weeder sales go up with full drive sales. <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting. That would be interesting. That would be right. some digging into data. Yeah. That would to be. To analyze. That would be for sure. But I think. As you look at those those time cycles, this is the a most unique time frame that we've ever been a part of. And I, I'm i a firm believer that what we saw in 21, 22, and 23, what we will see in 23 as far as production goes, 
I think that tell into 23 is going to be significantly higher than we've, than we've seen in the past, but you know, what's higher, the production amount of production that comes out by the end of 23. Oh, okay. So units, numbers, units, units and machines. So new deliveries, what that looks like now that final quarter of everyone's every manufacturer's. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think as you're looking at that, I think where the key factor this plays into more than anything, right, is that there's always going to just going to be this hole. There's always going to be a hole there of, of stuff that's not readily available. Now, what that does to to the to the used buying public, and how how does that influence the way they uh, they they purchase equipment and the way they look at equipment? To me, I mean, who knows that what that looks like? But in my 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 guess here, my best guess is really it's going to come down to um, what's it look like to Where's the upgrade thing? What's that look like, right? Where it is, what is available? Is it really what I want? Is yeah. it? Am I willing to take? I want to. I used to take my thirty-five hundred hour tractor and trade down to a seven hundred fifty hour tractor, a thousand hour tractor, something like that. Am I willing to trade this back to a two thousand hour tractor and hope that this seven hundred fifty hour tractor comes up that I want? Am I willing to do that, or am I just going to say, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and run it one more season, see what happens? Yeah, I. If I was to gauge the last month and a half on how that plays out, in 22, it was, yeah, I'll take the 2000. Yes, yes. So put, 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 put my name on it. This year's run it. Yeah. And the reason I think that is is because I think, I think all of ag took a breath in December. Oh, I think so, too. Big yeah. time. Yeah. The, the producers, the... The seed for cam guys, yeah. Yeah. the machinery guys, the grain guys, everybody was just finally like Judas Priest. Whew. Yeah. Yeah. And I we're we're still kind of riding that. Like, yeah. no joke. On the first, the phone's ringing. Yeah. I mean, guys are guys are buying. It's not like that stopped. But the just constant barrage of now 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 mm -hmm. has subsided yep and and it's pulling that out of the market and i also to, think too to, to a sense to a sense but i also think a couple things one is if two years from now we're still sitting at at, at a fed rate of, of four four and a half percent something like that and we've got six and a half to seven or eight percent interest rates that we see right now We'll sell more equipment than we sell right now because people are used to that. Right. Right, right, now, right, right now, it's right now they're puking like, in your crap, mouth. Man, you want me to trade my 2.5% interest rate in on a 65 or 7 or 8%. You know? oh, no. and, that's, and that's what you, you, there's some of that conversation going on, but it's just the, the sticker shock that you see right now is there. Again, kind of back to your point, where who's the $500,000 buyer? Two years from now, it's just going to be is what it is. That's That's what we're doing. I, mean, I think I I I'm going to argue that to a point because there is still a hell of a lot of friction at 295 versus 300. A lot of friction. Sure, but uh, that goes, now you're talking five. That that goes back to what you're what you're describing right there. Is you're going back in that your your the solidification and the concreting of those buying groups. Of what that is, you've got. Guys that are going to buy that one or two year old piece of equipment, and this is what they're going to pay for it. You got guys that are going to buy that three to five year piece of equipment, and this is what they're going to pay for it. So on and so forth. Well, all right. Yeah. That. And this is because this is where they can. That, that, that 295 to three gap is. That's a big section of the market, man. No, it's, that's a huge portion. I was just going to say that's 19, 20 in, in models. Right. You know, so that's not 21. Twenty-two, but that that two hundred and fifty to three hundred fifty thousand dollar, whatever it is, combine tractor, whatever it is that you're looking at, that is a huge section of the of the farming. Oh of yeah, of what they of yeah what buying. Public. But but here's my point, Casey. Damn man, five is a lot more than three fifty. I don't. I'm not going to argue that with you. That's that sounds. That's my whole line of machinery. The, the gap is my entire line of machinery. So well, I mean, but. I think I think the the bigger picture here is is what does it look like 
for each individual individual producer. And what I mean, so well, these guys that are buying two hundred fifty thousand to three hundred fifty thousand dollar machines. I'm not saying that. Who knows what their what their their farming plan is for the next five years? Yeah. That might be this guy's like, yeah, this, this, is my, you know, this is the last machine I'm going to buy. I'm going to go out five more years. We're we're that's getting to be a scary thing too, right? Well, on the flip side, the guy that's buying the the five hundred thousand, you know, the four fifty to I say the four hundred to five hundred thousand dollars something, they might not be buying new because. Is what it is, or whatever else you know. The whole like, let somebody else take the depreciation right. thing. Da, 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 da. But they're also, you know, I my my kids are coming back into the thing. Right? Yeah, you know, we got that, and we picked up more ground. So now I'm, I'm going to go. Out, I can go out and get this machine. I still, I mean, I'm not. Maybe I'm not quite ready to get the new one yet. But this one's just as good. You know. So I mean, there's I actually there's that play into that. I I had. Two different scenarios like that that this post harvest season. Both Midwest guys and both of the older guys called on the combine. Mm-hmm. Everything else was done with the kid. Both kids were seniors at ag schools and they they made the final decision. Yeah. It was like, damn. Yeah. Well, welcome home. Here's your seven eighty. Right. So I think uh, there's so many factors that are playing in into that. And I think the size of the farm is going to, are going to grow because one is that if you generation generationally, if you got people coming back into the operation, you got to continue to grow your operation. Right. Oh, yeah. That's just a given. Right. The other side of that is, I think over the next, you know, we've, this, this is, you hear this every time. Every time you watch any ag-based programming, listen to an ag-based uh, podcast or radio show or whatever it is you're doing, the number of, of the age of the American farmer and the amount of retirement sales and da 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 I mean, Machine Repeat, God love him, he's made, he's made a living off of, off of farm retirement sales. You know what I mean? And I think that's, we're going to see more of that ramp up now because there's, there's just a lot of, there's a lot of operations out there that don't have someone coming back. Oh, substantial. And so the amount of of opportunity to grow in any anywhere, and, and it doesn't necessarily mean that the current big is going to swallow that. Sure. sure, I've I've seen numerous times where the B customer, you know, triples. Yeah. Well, and it does too. You know, it's it's a family thing, and oh yeah, my dad and him, and blah blah blah, and the amount of money I want you to have it, and I'll ease you into it. Bam! Well, I think that that's 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 the traditional example that you're talking about. But I think I think the more trend line example that we see happen is the amount of money that's coming back into ag now. Yeah, outside investments and those kind of things, the amount of money that we see being poured into Agriculture, just in general, whether it's ag research, robotics, whatever, whatever it is, but just the amount of people that are looking at, hey, you know, we can get by this ground and partner up with this farmer over here, and he can farm it for us or ranch it for us or whatever it is he's doing. Yeah. And we can we can now do all that stuff, and we can go grow purple corn or whatever the hell we want to grow, and and we can do some crazy whatever. But I think that is. Um, there's going to be opportunities for access to capital that I don't think we've seen in the past. Cause it's, I, it's not traditional farming. Farming is not traditional, like the following the traditional path right. that, that you grew up in and that your like your dad grew up in those kind of things. I didn't grow up in it. So I, I don't know. I don't, I'm just saying like outside looking in the traditional ways still there, you know, the traditional farm getting passed down from generation, to generation, to generation, doing those kind of things. But I also think that the right person that has the right skill set can go sit down and talk to an investor that's got, he's got, or she's got, you know, 500,000 acres, 1,500 acres, 3,000 acres, something like that. And the investor's like, you know what, let's go make, let's go get these 10,000 acres over here and turn it. Those guys are going to rule it. Yeah. And I think that's just, I mean, you're seeing that. You're starting to see that kind of pop its, pop its way into the, the, the good old boy method is a thing of the past. I don't think it's a thing of the past. I just think it's, there's just a, there's another level of entry. That makes sense. Yeah, it's just like back to the succession thing. Yeah. 
there's a hell of a lot less of, I'm going to ease you into this. I want you to have it. Yeah. Holy shit, that's worth $15,000 an acre? You betcha. And you'll buy you'll buy all 10,000 of them? No, 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 no. That's that, what I'm saying, though. Like, yeah, you, yeah. And you'll buy exactly. all 10,000 acres of them? Yeah. Either that, and holy shit, that turned quick. Yeah. Or, hmm, dollars talk. Yeah. I win. Yeah, I think... So there, there are money. There's a lot of money coming in. I think that's going to change the plot, the way we look at how we do our business. Right. And obviously, I mean, technology is going to drive that too. You know? There it is. That's just that's just the way of the future, bro. Mm-hmm. Some somebody's future. <laughs> It'll be look for the plume of smoke. That'll be me. You'll be the guy in the uh, in in the Fourth uh, of July parade. Driving the eight R three seventy. That's still you still have to drive it yourself. You know what I mean? <laughs> no shit. <laughs> and people are gonna be scared to death. How's he controlling that? The yeah. <laughs> That's not safe to be driving. <laughs> Nobody's done that for years. <laughs> oh my god, man! I remember that'd be that. Yeah, I was building a spray today, and they still charge you for phone markers. I still well, they probably do charge you because they gotta find them. <laughs> I was going. It made me laugh. I stopped and I was like, I still have to pay for a phone marker. That's just not standard. You didn't order. order it though. Oh no. Oh, I was like, Jew. Wow. I was like, I figured that'd be standard option by now. Not just the, yeah. We got this phone marker. Everywhere. It used to be. Yeah. Now it's a charge. <laughs> and they're like, Holy crap, we gotta find one of these now. Who's, what was that supplier's name? He used to make those phone markers for us. Some guy wants me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it must be three point. No, it's an R. <laughs> uh, but they had, you know, I think kind of circling back to the five hundred thousand dollars use piece. Hey, real quick, real quick, I'm going to finish the phone thing. Okay, back in the uh, the early days of GPS, mm -hmm. we used to recommend guys. If you're going to grab a sandwich or something, drop a pile of foam right there because those satellites move and it'll change your correction. So there you go. Satellites and foam. Happy marriage. There you go. I haven't heard that for 20 years, but <laughs> it was a thing once upon a time. Oh, yeah. So I circle back to the $500,000 used piece of equipment. I think the way, we, the way we look at, traditionally the way we look at stuff right now, um, yeah, it's scary. I think as you look into the future and you start looking at how operations are changing and operations are growing, I don't think it's going to be that far-fetched. Now, when you get down to the fully autonomous stuff, you start looking at smaller machines and those kind of things and how they play into that, that's a whole other conversation. But I think in, in the interim, you know, the next five or six years, that's going to be what it is, man. Mm. It's not going to change. I mean, I think that's going to be. But again, I think you're a bad person. <laughs> I remember <laughs> even suggesting remember, such a thing. I remember when I sold sold one hundred fifty thousand dollars used combine and I felt bad. The guys were like, "I mean, I can't believe you're charging me one hundred fifty grand for a used combine." Yeah, what's a new one cost? I don't know, two twenty five. You got to be kidding me, man! But the same conversation was had when I can't believe you're selling me a fifty thousand dollars used combine. I can't believe you're selling me a you know, a $25,000 used combine. You know what I mean? All this stuff. I mean, all these different... Remember, my grandpa's first combine was five grand. You know what I mean? Like, that's well, that, you know, just that for inflation and boom. First new tractor I ever sold was a Magnum 230. And it was like 103, 105. And I was just sick. Driving up the guy's yard, I'm just like, ugh. He's going to lose his shit. Yep, that'll work. And I'm like, oh, cool. Wow. So everything wow, $105,000. Man. Then you just adjust and, and, and transport time. So, I mean, now you can buy the weights and tires. Yeah. Nonetheless, it's still expensive. And, yep. and farming is not getting any. But we're also economics of scale. You know. Exactly. That's a driver. That's a driver, too. And I think some of this, some of this, Shoring up of the lack of equipment, in my opinion, lack of equipment. We've seen this whole of stuff where 
not not a lot of it's going to be there. Is these upgrade kits are going to start filling that gap? And I think it's going to be a bigger turning point than I think what most people want to want to think about and, and admit. Because to me, yeah, I mean, you can have the argument all day long that you spent X when you bought it, and you're going to pour X back into it, and those two combined are going to be, you know, Y, and you can buy the new one for just a shade less than all that, the, that total investment. It's also cash outlay. What's that look like? And those kind of things are going to start playing into that. So I think the upgrade kit thing is going to be here. I think the upgrade kit, this is my, this is my big, big shocking moment here. I think the upgrade kit is going to be overly, um, it's going to overly level out the playing field. No access to capital or access to technology. The guys who buy new like that word. But I'm saying and if if the company it's gonna come it's gonna come from the factory. Sure. If the company continues to build whole new machine and that is their focus more than the upgrade side of it, you'll still the flock will still go that way. Upgrades will increase. But you for the human element is incredibly powerful. I, I agree with what you're saying. I think what you're saying is right. They like they like that new showing up on the truck. They like sure. driving that new home. They like dragging the new home. It's new. They'll, they'll like that new and new stuff and those kind of things until it doesn't matter. If I bought a new know. bale spear. <laughs> it won't. In my opinion, it won't matter. That new thing I, will go away when I'm not driving it. I I disagree a little bit because when I can I can make my new. Oh, if you're not driving it, yeah. Well, I can make my new, or I can get a new one. Yeah. I'm gonna go back to horses when we stop driving them. So it could be if a, anybody's got Belgians, give me a jingle. <laughs> the English do. <laughs> <laughs> Horses, not waffles. <laughs> but I'll take waffles too, either way. So I think, to me, I think it's just, it's changes so fast and so quick. Man, it is. That it's going to be hard to stay ahead of everything that's coming around. Once upon a time, they put AC in a cab and people lost their mind, I bet. Yeah. I bet not. I bet that was like, hell yeah. Well, even auto steer, Dude. auto steer itself, other than price, other than price, Never had any, never had a coarse word about it in the early days. I can't remember. How it was when it was 50 and then 30 and then 20 and then, oh, really? Okay. I don't remember where this guy was at, but I'm pretty sure it was a Massey dealer. <laughs> pretty sure it was a Massey dealer. It wasn't my house, right? No. But I was at a dealership. Anyway, I, don't, I was, I might have been when I was back working for traveling around with Southwest Association back in the day, but I'm pretty sure it was in Missouri someplace. Anyway, this guy was a mass dealer and he was talking, he was like, you're talking that somehow we kind of got on the, the, you know, the auto tracks of fat thing. Right. And, and he was like, you know, I'll say that, but you know what? Air conditioning used to be a fad too. He goes, cause there was a, he goes, a mass to come out and you could get it with or without. And there was a, you could easily put it in the cab, but it, you know, obviously it costs significantly more to put it in after the fact 11.35, baby. And it was, he's, the guy said, you, you'd be amazed how many guys told me that hey, I've been farming my whole life without air conditioning. I don't need it now. And the first, it was never a thought till it was an option, right? Yep. And now that it's an option, it's in the back of their head the whole time. They're in that cab just sweating their ass off. Going like, man, if I had air conditioner, I'd be all right. <laughs> yeah. He goes, it would be, he said, 75% of the people that told me they didn't want air conditioning in the cab before the next season came around, came in and asked if they could get air conditioned, put back in their cab. I know of three instances where a tractor, like a, a 20 series, mm -hmm. showed up with a valve. It got taken off. Oh, yeah. Do you remember that? I remember when, we, when, when I first started evaluating equipment, that was the thing. It was like, it's it got a valve on it. And because I remember like, the valve was like, four, like 4,000 bucks or five. Yeah, yeah about I, five installed. Yeah, five installed. And they're like, man, I just, you got to just take that off. I go, it's, we'll keep the valve then. Yeah. Well, your price dropped 15 grand yeah. for that $5,000 valve. The thing about the valve was it was just kind of like, oh, you know, 
you know. But there again, those same people that said they didn't want the valve came back in and got the. They valve. did. Yeah. They did. I know two of the three bought the valve that was taken off their tractor. Yeah, I saw, two years I, later. And you know, you know what it came back to. You know why that is? It was never a thought when it wasn't an option. But the minute that it was an option, in the back of your head, you're like, man, it'd be a lot easier to do this. More often than not, you're probably right. In these instances, the, the two that bought their own valve back, fiddle spring tight. Well, yeah, I mean. <laughs> that's all it boiled down to. Oh, <laughs> well, in the book, it says that's five grand. So take it off. Well, I can't give you five grand if I take it off. I can give you like 3,800. Well, Take it off. They come back in and spend five grand. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I think, to me, I mean, it's just, I, I think a lot of this stuff, a lot of technology-wise things, it's out of sight, out of mind until it's an option. And then when it's an option, the idea of powerful being. Ben. Yes. I, nobody ever in their life. Nobody. I, a go. lot of guys folded the bin on on that 9770. What That was the best combine ever made. Everybody climb up the ladder and fold their bin in. Be like, hey, Johnny, before you leave the field, make sure you fold down the bins because you got to go under, you know, yeah. you know oh, yeah. Adam Street Bridge. You now know? it's like, oh, if you're not in the mountain time zone, you got to have powerful. But Johnny's. Why like, does it keep the humidity out? Well, I don't way, know. Now Johnny's driving down the road. He's like, oh, I forgot about Adam Street Bridge. Let me go and hit this button real quick. Yeah. You know, and then it folds down and then it comes, you know, whatever. You know why Johnny forgot to fold the bin in? Because he's on his damn phone. He's probably making a TikTok or a YouTube or probably. something, yeah. Snapchatting. Yeah. Hey, watch this. Yeah. And I, I, so Johnny needs to find a different job. Right. So I guess my uh, my predictions, my my overall thing, what I see for twenty three is that a lot of the stuff that we see right now that we're like, oh my god, I can't believe this. By the end of twenty three, it'll be like, oh, it's just the way we do business now. I I part of me thinks like global apocalypse and all of a sudden you know the shift modules and your thumb shifters and all that and your IVTs doesn't work and everybody comes back to the sound guard oh yeah you know like a zombie apocalypse deal yeah but odds are you're probably exactly right I think in general I don't know personally if it's going to be one year is not a, a long time to digest relatively a $100,000 to $75,000 jump. You know what I mean? Well, should it be, take a look at what, look what you just said and look over the last 18 months how much stuff has jumped. That, I know, but that's, that's what I'm saying. I be, Because of the exhale, I think that I'm giving that maybe too much power, but I think it was a hell of a lot. Well, wow, first quarter business be, this year is going to be because of, that you know. that twelve rolling up the hill or down the hill, down the hill, down the hill. That was a damn wall, dude. That was like a two month bam, 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 and things changed. So I think. This time, you're, what you're saying is, I feel, is powered by numbness to it, a little numb to it, you know, like, eh, it's, like you said, it's just what, just how we do business now. Right. All combines are 500. I think you're going to get, now, if that ending stocks sets ablaze to everything, I did. did. Did a good job today. But I mean, like, for the year, okay? Say we get, say things get crazy on top of crazy. All bets are off. But if there's any kind of normal for this year, I think it's slightly <clears throat> softer. Slightly less flaccid. I, I I do. I I mean you and, and here's why. I take a lot of calls, right? Mm -hmm. Call volume in the last six months has plummeted. Because well, it's not available. Nope, can't get it. 
So you're going to have, you have all your buyers who just know they can't get it, can't find it, it doesn't exist, blah, blah, blah. So you got, I think, maybe a quarter, you know, your, your three-month, four-month window to snap out of that after there's some supply. There's going to have to be a constant visual supply yeah. to trigger them psychologically to, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't have to give ask. You got four of those. Right. Like, then we start normal. I feel like there's there's enough catch up in production, albeit limited, in certain segments that the the catch up in production fixes part of our use supply. If I was to guess, I'd say 30, 40%. Nowhere near, you know, what are we going to do with it? But that, it all just stacks up to, it, it could be, that's just how we do business. And it could be a real quick pullback. Because when the pullback happens from the producers, it's quick. It, it is, but the difference is between very quick. what we're going into now, even if they do pull back, but but here's the thing: pressure. there's no marketplace. I mean, there's no. I I know, but there yeah. there's no right. I get that, but what I'm saying is, I think those numbers are going to have an impact. I well, really, really will. I mean, absolutely. If you have, I I think it's going to be more of an impact than more of. That's just how we do business. If you have, if there's only five combines in North America, but nobody wants to buy those five combines, right? You sell it Tuesday, so you, you have an oversupply of combines. Oh hell, that was just yesterday. So I mean, you're gonna prices are gonna adjust until you find that place where people want to buy. I like I said earlier, I think we're gonna see a, a slide of that of that scarcity premium across twenty three to twenty four. And that could be 10, 15%. Who knows what that is? But now you're talking about 10 or 15% on 500,000 bucks. I mean, that's $100,000. Yeah. Well, that's 50,000 bucks. But I mean, the, the biggest, 5,000, you know. I, w I will say this, and this is doesn't have a damn thing to do with machinery or farming. So it kind of makes me sick. Everything in 23, whether it's good, bad, it won't be bad. There's no damn way it'll be bad. Whether it's the climb continues or let's look at it this way. October 15th to January 15th, maybe level. Ending stocks could make it shoot up. And I'm not talking about the markets. I'm just talking about the business, machinery demand, selling. That could make it shoot up pretty steep it could make a slow climb it could be a okay so how insane is fertilizer going to be this year how insane is it going to be for every little thing i gotta buy now last year a lot of global impact on that this year hopefully not as much but it's not like we have global peace either especially in the regions that affect all that. Mm -hmm. But by the time you weigh all of that, I think that is why there, I mean, I, I'm not going to risk my job on it, but I'd bet some cash that 23 softer. I guess it's, it's, it goes back to the scarcity premium I've been talking about. Man, that's what was that was. But that, I, I, I don't just mean that. I mean like we, we as used people eat eat a few more roll aids. Mm, I, don't, I don't. I don't think it's going to be. I don't think it's going to be as bad as what. But there again, like I said, earlier, if you only have five, if you've only got five. Combines and nobody wants to buy those five combines. Give an oversupply of combines. Asses for seats. Right now, if you and every single Saturday, every time 
Sullivan, Big Iron, anybody sends out an email, there's an, one less ask for a seat. At the same time, another machine hits the market. Every single time that happens, that happens. Now, God bless it, very rarely is it a competitive machine. It's a gorgeous 70. It's a 16, 680, you know. It's not... It, it, it's not a machine that is our, this is what we have to move, you know, focus. But that's, you ever think of that? That's exactly how that works. One less driver, one less buyer, one more machine. I understand that, though, but if you, have, if you lose a buyer for a combine someplace, that ground is still getting combined by somebody. I understand that, but then you run into acres per machine, which is, I get it, I get your angle, that that might be, oh, that, that might be where the 500 guy comes from, Casey. Right, I mean, maybe that's what it is. We buy two new ones, I don't want to buy three. Right. Well, I think, I guess, and I'll, I think two things, one is, we're going to see what today's what what we see after today? If you pick up a thousand acres, you don't have to get another combine. You don't know. But I'm just saying, like it depends on where you're at. But I mean, more than likely, if you pick up, if you're doing five thousand now and you got two six eighties, right. and it's, it's everything. All, it's all yeah. relative, right? If you go from a thousand, you pick up another thousand, you double your operate. Yes. Well, okay. If you go from a thousand, if you have five, now I need now, two ninety five hundreds. If you have five thousand acres now, and and you go to 6,000 or 5,500 acres, something like that. More than likely, you don't need a, a you don't need to add anything to your fleet. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, you, it's you're, true. You're going to put a, more, a little more strain on your logistics, probably. Is it going to be a little tougher to get to fill, you know, the new field you have over here? Maybe. Well, but and, you, and that's a logistics thing. We're not, we don't sell trucks and trailers and all that. We, we, we live in an area. Where there is a certain region that is gigantic block of acres cash flow, okay? That block of acres changes hands frequently mm -hmm. because of logistics. Oh, yeah, that's true. Because the guys who can digest it are 50 miles away. And it it's just point blank an issue. Right. But everybody who's done that has successfully done it without adding a single piece of machinery of farm equipment. Yep. They've they've added trucks, they've added a grain a grain cart, worst sure. case scenario. Sure. But I mean that's that's it. Yeah. And typically in our region, the guys that are doing that are what is that? Say five, and they're either they're probably in the five to ten, or the twenty guy. So, and I mean, it's just yep. Here we are. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I think a lot of things are going to change in twenty three. Long story, just to your point. Sorry. <laughs> so I think twenty three is going to be that easily. I have to talk about farming at some point. Very definable in, in the way we look at things moving forward because I don't think it's going to be the same. I think it's going to be the way things change in 23 are kind of going to be the precursor to what we see happening down the road and how things change in the way we do business. It's not going to be like it used to be. Long story short. All right. Good place to stop, Aaron. So if anybody is hiring and has a time machine, Make you find one of those hot tub time machines. Oh, yeah. There you go. Do you have any... Hey, let's go to town and get some Chernobyl. <laughs> All right. I need a six-pack of Chernobyl and a uh, spray bottle of Sex Panther. What is that called? Sex Se Panther. Sex Panther, yeah. 60% of the time? It works every it time. It works every time. All right. Folks, I want to reach out to you and get more information about what we got going on over at Aaron Fiddle's Place. What's the best <laughs> At Aaron Fiddle's Place. Well... We do. I got some deals lately. Do you combines, Let choppers? Them Let them rip. Uh, pretty much any combine. Oh, oh, let her rip. How about 
a X9 1000. Okay. With every option known to man. Little sucker. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's a little one. We we used it on pivot corners. <laughs> get, the, get that little thing out of the way. Um, every option known to man. Tracks, four-wheel drive, everything. Been through the shop, fully inspected, ready to rock and roll. And I even got a deal for that mythical 6.5 interest. Oh, look at that. On that combine. And <laughs> we just spent half hour on a podcast talking about $500,000 machinery and how gross that is. This combine is a smoking damn deal at six fifty. dollars There you go, see? You won't find another one that cheap. And if it is, it hasn't been through the shop. You got the heads. You got a head going. Um, I've got a few shovels and some knives. Yeah. No. Um. Yes, we do have a uh, sixteen row corn head for it. There you go. Okay. No flex draper, but we do have. Oh no. Yeah. I, I take it back. Draper. No head. HD forty five F. Yeah, I think that's right. Is that how they say? It? Is that Right, for sure. That's right. I'm still at 635 FD. So, <laughs> like, what a 936 and a 635 F? Like, that's two headers. But uh, no, beautiful combine, all the stuff, and a mere 650. Oh, 650,000, 6.5 percent interest. Look at that. Go sits in your off. shed six and a half months of the year. Bam. There you go. Yep. So if, how did I get hold of you? Shoot me a text. 308-760-1193. You can email me at aaron.fintel at movingironllc.com. I am on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, and I don't know what else. I say Snapchat because that's LinkedIn. Oh, LinkedIn. Yes, LinkedIn. Yeah. All by my name. And Snapchat's a big thing in the ag, man. It is. It is really cool. Yeah. Really a big deal. I'm like, I just, I don't, that, that 30 seconds to grab it and record unless I'm <clears throat> driving down the road or something. I don't have, I don't have time. Right. But it's awesome. Yeah. It is a, uh, especially harvest planning, everything. Yeah. Cabin, feeding and moving snow, all of it. I tried the Snapchat once and I don't get it. you I don't get it. You're not a. You don't. You don't have feelings and stuff. So that, might be. Like, it's it's a human element, buddy. It's okay. Right on. Okay. I'm uh, Casey Seymour. You can find me at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Moving Iron LLC. Uh, you can go to LinkedIn at Moving Iron Podcast. Check the video version of this out on the YouTube channel, which is the Moving Iron Podcast YouTube channel. And you can also uh, hit me up on over on the website MovingIronLLC.com. I'll give you all the information for the Moving Iron Summit coming up here in Nashville, Tennessee, September 11th through the 13th of 23. So check that out. So if you want more information about that, you can send me an email at Moving Iron Podcast at Moving Iron Podcast .com and uh, start working through that. Starting to get everything posted for that. So that'll be updated here um, over the next couple of uh, couple of weeks here. I have a more robust site and those kind of things for you to look at there. Um, if you're a dealer, and you want to check out some stuff when it comes to helping out your parts and service departments. I've got a guy by the name of Wayne Brozick, and Wayne is a, a friend of mine, and we work together. And he's one of the few consultants you're going to find out there that actually worked in the business and understands what it means to do it every day. So top notch. If you want to check out Wayne and get some get some help in your parts and service department when it comes to training or just processes and how those things work, go over to wbglobal.com wbglobal.com and check that out and Wayne will, Wayne will get you guys squared away for sure so check that out So and be one of the first 150 people to get that $50 discount on your registration fee from the great folks over at Axon so with that I'm Casey Seymour with Aaron Fennell we smart folks out Moving iron in the 21st century